welcome to Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people in the Android community. I'm Gwen Twet Dow, and I'm speaking with... Andrella Darrington. And we're currently in San Francisco, where both of us are attending Kotlin Conf. It's so exciting. I, I know. I was telling my daughter about it last night. I thought, I'm like, it's like the, one of the first Kotlin conferences ever, and we get to go. So actually, where are you based, Angela, and uh, how did you get started in Android? So I'm based in Seattle. Uh, we recently moved there from St. Louis, Missouri in August. Uh, and so I started in Android in 2012. I was a Java developer for a long time before then. And, <laughs> and uh, I had actually recently told my director that I was getting a little bit bored of just doing Java. I was primarily doing Swing and doing pluggable look and feels for our commercial app, which was nice. actually really fun. Uh, and we had had a third-party, like, cross-platform mobile app. Uh, the company I was working for at the time was Scottrade. And in 2012, they decided, like, mobile is a thing, and we need to be <laughs> on the bandwagon, and we need to bring it in-house, we need it native, we need to make sure we're keeping up with the needs of our brokerage. And so they asked me to join the Android team, and we were given a few months to train up on Android before we were cut loose. And, and they just let you cut you loose, and you got on the Android train and just were chugging along since then? We were then. just chugging along since nice. then, yeah. You very recently, with uh, one of your uh, colleagues, uh, gave a talk at Seattle Android? I did, yes. And what was that talk? Well, it's actually called RX on the Iron Bank, but <laughs> essentially it was more of an intro and primer of how to use RX in a real application. Uh, that was an area we felt that hadn't really been explored, at least in the Seattle area. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people are familiar with blogs, um, like code snippets of Rx, but a lot of people hadn't put it all together yet. I'm really excited to see the video of your, of your talk with, um, sorry, in your, in your, in your co-presenter's name is? Ari Lisensky. It, it sounds like you got a lot of really great um, feedback from your talk um, and about how you approached um, teaching Rx. We did. Uh, at first, when Ari and I started talking about this talk, we thought we would approach it at more of an e intermediate level. Mm -hmm. We thought there's been a lot of blog articles, there's been a lot of conference talks in RX. Yes. <laughs> uh, several years of this going on, and we didn't just want to, you know, I guess bore people in the audience. Uh, and then Ari and I got to talking, and we realized what was missing for some folks that we had already talked to was the, that connective piece. Mm -hmm. Like, how do we put together merge and combine latest? How do we talk across the layers of uh, more of like a clean architecture app, something that has a data layer, a business layer, and a view layer? Uh, how do we do that with MVP or MVVM? Uh, and that's where the talk really like hit its stride, we felt like. And also, if you can't tell from the title, but if you're into Game of Thrones, you will uh, extremely enjoy the user story. <laughs> I mean, it's a whole <laughs> user story, I feel like. Um, other than it being just a very concrete example, um, anything in particular that people are responding to or kind of helping them grok Rx a little bit better? Yeah, so the, the really specific feedback that we got was that seeing how we went across the layers, seeing how we reused or we're able to use that observable across the layers, really, really helped people understand. That that seemed to be the confusion. We had a lot of people who thought they would have to observe the data layer and the business layer and maybe observe it into a behavior subject and then the behavior subject would be observed into the view layer. Uh, and that was something that seemed uh, a little bit confusing for some folks. And so the feedback really was just seeing it all together. Mm -hmm. uh, we also had Dagger in there, so that really helped people feel like they could see what a real application might look like, how you could test drive this application, even though we did not get to the point of writing actual unit tests for it. Can you kind of just briefly describe kind of like the architecture that you have and where Rx <laughs> fits within it? Yeah, so what we had was we had a faked out data layer that uh, was creating observables. Those actually were behavior subjects just churning out fake data. <laughs> um, and we had a couple. So the, uh, the back story of the talk is that the Iron Bank was feeling overwhelmed by the amount of information coming out of Westeros. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. And they wanted a dashboard to help them figure out which house they should be supporting financially and which houses they should probably start pulling back their finances. Uh, and so we had a battle provider and we had a debt provider. 
And those things were turning out fake data. I imagine a lot of emissions, knowing how Westeros is. <laughs> yes, lots of emissions. We're trying to keep track of where the dragons were. Uh, you know, little subtleties like the Night King wasn't interested in money. Uh, <laughs> and, um, and so, yeah, so then that got fed into a business layer, which was a little light for this example. Mm -hmm. But in reality, you would probably have a lot more work going on that business layer, mm -hmm. doing more um, combined latest, uh, more filtering, more mapping, that sort of thing. Uh, and then, uh, then the business layer was observed by the view model mm -hmm. at the, uh, the view layer. Uh, and so that's where we could really like dig into how mapping works and how filter works. Uh, and, and showing people that you could even chain mapping. So yes. that seemed to be something that really like stuck out for some folks mm -hmm. that, that this wasn't like a one and done uh, right. function. Uh, and so that, that was where I felt like the magic happened. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that really helped us, we tried to grow the talk from mm -hmm. very simple examples to much more complex examples. So we finished it with a combined latest example that was doing quite a bit of mapping and filtering, um, taking in the different feeds and producing a credit rating mm -hmm. that the, the Bank of Westeros could use for their analysis. Is there anything that, that for in you as you were learning like ArcJava and kind of getting used to, I guess, this more reactive way and functional mm -hmm. way of doing it, is there anything that I guess, um, I guess uh, was a sticking point for you that you tried to address in the talk? So I think the most important thing that we wanted to come out of the talk was what is the difference between merge, combine latest, and SIP? Right, the different operators. And, yeah, the, yeah um, so that's where the, the seed of the talk was somebody had come to us and was, confused by combine latest and confused mm -hmm. by zip and why are they different? I mean, yeah, why are they different? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and that's actually where the example came from mm -hmm. for our talk. Uh, since I have a brokerage background, something I understand really well is fast streaming data yep. uh, that needs to be combined with slow streaming data. So something like stock prices stream in very fast, people's trades stream in very slow. Mm -hmm. uh, and so for me, combined latest, what, that was an obvious example mm -hmm. of when you would want to use that. Mm -hmm. uh, and that increased a much more fun example of the Iron Bank. Uh, so that, that was the strength and then Finding an example for Zip was a little bit tougher. Yeah, I was gonna uh, say, what was your example for Zip? I, that, that was like when I was, I was just sitting here, just like, wow, what'd you do for Zip? So Zip, we actually weren't able to fit into the app. Uh, and so our example was the dire wolf puppies. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> so for those who are familiar with the, t the show, at um, the very beginning of the show. Yeah, those, I, I yeah. think we're past spoiler warning, so you're fine, yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 Uh, so the dire wolf puppies are found early on in the show, and there's one for every one of the Stark children, including Jon Snow. Mm -hmm. And not all the Stark children were available at the time when we found the dire wolf puppies. Mm -hmm. And so one of the puppies was not connected with a child until they got back to Winterfell. Mm -hmm. And so we, that was our example of Zip lining up for all of them except for one until they got back to Winterfell. Then Jon Snow and Ghost get together, and now we are admitted a happy. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's amazing. It, it, it's it's crazy because I think that's like that's like a, such a challenge with RX. There are so many operators, and I think just like anything else, it's like knowing when to use the right tool. When um, do you have any recommendations on like when someone should jump into RX? Like any situations or just um, because I, I think there's a, a fear always of that that golden hammer thing where hey, like I know RX now. I'm going to use RX everywhere. Everything's an observable. Do you yeah. have any tips on? I guess a, a good spot for people to identify, where a, a good a good way to for people to identify a good spot to introduce RX into their yeah. lives. I would say anywhere you're using an async task would mm -hmm. be a great use for RX. Um, the service layer is a wonderful use, especially if you're using retrofit already. Mm -hmm. I find that RX just simplifies that logic so nicely. You get that nice parsed JSON object out, and you can map it to some kind of a business entity that you want. Uh, and I, I find that that code's very, very clean, very easy to read, mm -hmm. uh, which helps a lot with bringing new people onto the team, debugging problems that happen on a production. Um, and because uh, I find that async can have a lot of boilerplate to it yep. and things can feel a little separated, yep. uh, which uh, then when you have a production issue, it can be a little bit tough to figure out where is it falling apart. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was my great, that's my best suggestion. 
And um, do you have any, like, I guess, not code smells, but um, any kind of, like, caveats, I guess, um, in terms of RX, like, um, or maybe even just ways of people to tell that they're doing it right or that they're on the right track in terms of, like, reactive, uh, more reactive style programming? So I would say that if your code feels cleaner and easier to read, you're doing RX probably correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, if it starts feeling like it's hard to figure out where your connection points are in RX or starting, things start feeling a bit like a spaghetti monster, then you might want to rethink how RX is being handled. Uh, one of the smells is usually too many subjects. Um, oh, yes. I, yeah. I believe there's a lot of discussion about the valid, like whether you should be using subjects, period. Um, yes. Other than that, I mean, um, you, you should test to make sure that any exceptions are getting bubbled correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the things I've seen people kind of stumble on a little bit is it's easy to subscribe with only a subscriber that's handling the next behavior, so mm -hmm. the next emission. Mm -hmm. If you're not handling the error, emissions, then you can end up in a situation where your observable is not functioning the way that you expected it to. And, um, and you don't really know why, because there's no feedback mm -hmm. from Rx in those situations. So that, that is something to always be careful is there's that on air is always being handled. Um, yeah. Rx is, I mean, do you think it's fair to say it's, it's pretty challenging in like any way of thinking? Like it's, it's definitely mm -hmm. not, I don't know, it's not what, something we're not used to. I guess I would say so, uh, and so I've been in a reactive paradigm world for mm -hmm. quite a while. We had a reactive framework at Scottrade mm -hmm. that we used, oh, and cool. yeah, which was really was really wonderful. And so jumping to RX for was an easier jump for me because paradigm switch had already happened. Mm -hmm. But I know even with a more simplistic paradigm or uh, RX framework that we had back at Scottrade, mm -hmm. when we would bring new team mem members on, there was several weeks of really them getting used to that paradigm. And there's always that aha moment when it finally clicks. Mm -hmm. But for a while, there's this like leap of faith, I feel like, with Rx that this will make my life easier. It will be easier for me to read in the future. But right now, it's a mm -hmm. little tough. And mm -hmm. I think that's a totally normal experience with any kind of reactive paradigm. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you go into Rx and there's so many functions, it's it's so powerful. Uh, and I feel like it can be a little bit daunting at times. Uh, I remember listening to a uh, talk with Dan Liu. I want to say it was the Fragmented Podcast. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned that he has like five to 10 functions he knows really well. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of his main toolbox with Rx. <laughs> and uh, after hearing that, that gave me some confidence that if I can find my five to 10 functions in Rx and consider that my toolbox, then I can get feel really strong and confident in those functions. Mm -hmm. And then when I run into a situation that's maybe a little outside the box, I already have a structure there to have some comfort level there. That is fantastic advice. Um, so finding your kind of your your tool set and then building mm -hmm. on that as you go, but always having that to rely on. That is an awesome uh, piece of advice and I think a great place to leave off. If people wanted to find you on the internet, how can they do that? So I'm on Twitter and you can find me at Angela MLD. So that's A-N-G-E-L-L-A. Uh, MLD, but you can probably find me both. Just in Jella, I think I'm the only one. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much again. Thank you. Thanks. And thank you all, and we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>